Welcome to the Doubles Only Tennis Podcast, where you learn the best doubles strategies to improve your game and win more matches. I'm your host, Will Bocek. This podcast, my website, and my weekly newsletter all focus on the goal of better understanding the sport of doubles and helping players like you improve faster through actionable advice that you can use in your very next match. My goal is to provide the best double strategy resources in the world. And to do that, I study, analyze, and work with players at every level of the game, all the way up to the ATP and WTA tours. If you enjoy this podcast, I've created double strategy products that go even deeper if you want to take your doubles knowledge to the next level. At the end of this episode, I'll explain more about them, or if you want to learn more now, go to thetennistribe.com slash products. Here's today's episode. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. Today we're doing an Australian Open preview episode for you. I'm joined by Hanlon Walsh and we're going to make some predictions and kind of go through the draw here. Uh, we're recording this on day two of the Aussie Open and day three, which is tomorrow, is going to be uh, the start of the doubles. Hanlon, welcome back. Good to be back. I think I'm on hour number five of uh, listening to tennis podcast today. So glad to talk a little bit after listening pretty much all afternoon to other ones. <laughs> what was the uh, the biggest story of the day that everyone talked about on the tennis podcast? Ooh, mm, probably have to go with Nick Kyrgios uh, withdrawing. Yeah. Huge, huge, huge bummer. Obviously for singles and doubles, and just with given the timing of you know the break point um, and Netflix coming out and him being a big star of that in episode one. I think it's. A bummer for Aussie tennis fans, but you know tennis kind of anywhere. Yeah, yeah. He uh, so I watched Breakpoint over the weekend, and yeah, they talked a lot about his in episode one, his uh, doubles run last year. Um, so that uh, yeah, that's going to be a big hit for doubles, which is obviously we don't like to see. Um, okay, so we've got the draws here in front of us. We've made our picks for each quarter. Let's start with. Uh, the men's side, um, the top quarter, we have Kuhlhoff and Skubski as the top overall seeds. Also in that bracket and seeded, um, we've got Glasspool and Haley Avara at the bottom of the bracket. Jamie Murray, Michael Venus as 11 seeds. Um, Gonzalez and Roger Vaseline as the 15 seeds. Who do you like in this top quarter here? Um, I, you know, went with a safe bet and picked Kulhoff and Skubski to make it out of there. They were just so solid last year. They won seven tournaments and I think made 10 finals, you know, finished world number one, just had an insane year in 2022. And I, I expect them to, to back that up this year. Yeah. Yeah. They um, certainly had a good 2022. Uh, but they haven't had quite the same start to this year. So they did lose. Um, yeah, they did lose their first round last week, right? Or two weeks ago. Yeah. So in, I'm going to pull it up here. Yeah. So they lost first round in Adelaide one to Mello and McDonald uh, in a tight 12 10 third set. And then last week, um, they did make the semi, so they won two matches, but then lost to Dodig and Krychek 6-2-7-6. So they're not in that same form they were last year. Uh, they don't have a super tough path to the the third round um, or the quarters, but I think looking at this... Let's see. Yeah, coming out of this tricky, quarter. They have a couple of tricky singles players in their first two rounds with Bublik in round one and then potentially Fitzapas in round two. Um, I don't know. You know, matchup-wise, it may not be an issue, but just you never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bublik and, and J.P. Smith and are... Um, that could be a J.P. Smith's a good. Opponent. Yeah, he, he's a, a good doubles player. Um, he's from... Australia. the Smithinators. Yeah, he's he's from Australia. <laughs> Um, so he'll have the home crowd on his side for sure. Um, but in this quarter, I like Glasspool and Hiliavara. Uh, they have essentially not lost. Um, let me pull them up. They pretty much haven't lost this year. So they've won 
Adelaide one beating Murray and Venus in the finals. And then in Adelaide two, uh, they made it to the semis and then pulled out with, I think it was a hip injury. I forget, but it sounded not too serious. It sounded like they had just played a lot of tennis. Um, so they did pull out of Adelaide two, but yeah, they essentially hadn't lost a match in the last uh, two and a half weeks. So uh, I'm going to go with them. They made a huge leap last year from 2021. Um, you know, I don't think anybody had them picked in the top eight to finish the year, and they um, they were able to do that. So I, I think they're going to improve again and get through, although they do have a tough first round against uh, Nate Lamons and Jackson Withrow, who made the finals in Auckland last week. So, um, yeah, I, I guess when I look at this a little closer, this is a little bit tougher quarter than I – initially um had thought but uh yeah that's think, that's what i've got coming out of this one do you want to talk uh dark horses now or do you want to wait on that because actually my dark unseated dark horse is in this section too it's, kind of, <laughs> it's pr- probably it, the it's same on, unseated uh, dark horse i have <laughs> go ahead my, mine is uh lamins and withrow i i have them upsetting glasspool and heliovara in the first round okay so so i considered that um and I, you know, that wouldn't surprise me as well as they played last week. But my unseated dark horse is also in this quarter, and it's John Isner and Hans oh, Hock Verdugo. Isner played such good doubles last year, uh, early in the year, especially obviously winning winning Indian Wells in Miami. Um, and yeah, I could just see him going on a tear again. Like he's he's essentially out of you know, the chance to make a, a single semifinal anymore to Grand Slam. So, you know, maybe he's starting to think about, I can play doubles for a lot longer. Who knows? Um, but I can see them making a run. So we that's will good, see. Yeah, that's a good one. I think, um, yeah, Lamons and Withrow have really impressed me over the past, you know, couple of months. Uh, they're both like just outside the top 40 now. So they're kind of creeping up the, the doubles mm-hmm. rankings. And they had two big wins last week in Auckland over Murray and Venus. Um, and mm-hmm. Granolers and Zabias, and then also Char- uh, Charty and, and Martin. So it was a good good run for them making it to the finals of Auckland. Yeah, yeah, and they were right there with Mekdich and Pavic in the finals, I believe, as well. Um, but yeah, those are all really good wins against really good doubles teams. So um, yeah, fair point there. Uh, so this next quarter is Mekdich and Pavic's quarter. Um, Andreas Mies and John Piers are... Uh, a potential second round matchup or third round, excuse me. Um, Fognini and Bolelli are in this quarter as well. Grenoyers and Zabios are the fourth seed in this quarter. Who do you have for this one? Uh, I've got Mektic and Pavic. I do as well. Um, I do also have a, um, we decided to do a non top eight uh, seated dark horse and mine is in this quarter um andreas mies and john pierce uh john pierce is from australia i think he'll have the home crowd behind him he won this tournament i believe in 2017 i think that's right um and yeah they're both a uh, semi-veteran doubles duo with a lot of experience and i, I think they could make a good team so um definitely keep an eye on them as well yeah, I think Mektic and Pavic um, just riding the momentum from winning last week in Auckland. And then also I just feel like they're, they've are they got to be hungry for another major having gone, you know, last year without winning one. And then 2021, mm-hmm. they had such a, a great year, uh, breakout year as a team together. I think they'll be eager to start 22, I mean, 2023 off strong. And, they you know, they already have by winning their first uh, tournament of the year. Yeah, absolutely. And another unseated team here is Gilles and Vliegen. So they they won in um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, beating um, Rajiv Ram and Joe Salisbury. Um, so they won a tournament in India, I believe it was, uh, and beat them on the way to the final. So that's another unseated team to keep an eye on. I haven't watched them play a whole lot, but um, they did uh, win that tournament. And then... Um, it looks like they lost in their first match to Zabios and Granollers 
in Auckland last week. So another team to keep an eye on there. Um, so next we have the quarter with, it uh, looks like they're at the bottom. So Arevalo and Roger. Um, so they're the three seeds in this quarter. They've got uh, Haas and Middlecoop and then Bopana, Ebden, uh, and Dodig and Krychek. Who do you have in this one? Uh, this one was a tough one for me, but I ended up going with Dodig and Krychek. I know that um, they had to pull out of their um, the finals last week against uh, Aravalo and Roger, but I'm assuming that was more just precautionary than anything uh, so they could be in good shape for the Australian Open. Um, and I think they're, you know, in great form right now, probably the strongest team in this um, section. They do have a really tough, tricky first round against uh, Mackie McDonald and um, and Marcelo Mello, um, mm-hmm. who had, had a good week last week. So um, tricky first round, but I think if they can get past that, they should be um, good to make it out of this quarter. Yeah. Yeah, I had them as well. Um, they just ended the year so well last year that, I feel like they're just going to take that momentum, and they showed that a little bit last week. I think they're going to take that momentum into 2023 um, and and make a deep run here. So, yeah, I, I totally agree with you there. Um, yeah, I think power rankings-wise, they're, I know that um, Arvalo and Roger are three and, and they're five, but I, I would put them in the top four power rankings, um, just like you said, with the, the big mm-hmm. fall season they had last year and, you know, they're – they only started playing together midway through the season last year, so that they haven't had the same amount of time to build up points as um, Aravalo and Roger have. Yeah, yeah, and then keep, keep an eye on uh, Bopana and Ebden too. I mean, I mean, Ebden with the home crowd. I, I think there's a big Indian fan base in Australia as well, so Bopana will have a huge crowd behind him. Um, if they start to make a run, I'm sure they'll make some noise around the grounds and uh get get the crowd on their side for sure which could play a factor um yeah, like we sure. saw last year have you heard why um i'm assuming it may be singles related but why ebden and purcell aren't playing together this year and defending I, their runner-up title I, I do not know um yeah so purcell um, is in the draw with jordan thompson in the bottom mm-hmm. half but I, I know that he's also still pursuing a singles career so that would be my guess, maybe he wants to focus more on singles this year and Ebden wants to play with a, a doubles first partner in, in Bopana. Um, but I haven't heard for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know either. Um, so this, uh, this bottom quarter, uh, this is the quarter. So we've got Ram and Salisbury. They're the two seed. Uh, Matos and Vega Hernandez, 13 seed. Cabal and Farah are the 12 seeds. And I believe this was the quarter with Kyrgios and Kokonakis, if I'm not mistaken. Um, talk a little bit about this quarter. Who do you have uh, coming through here? Um, I have Ram and Salisbury. I think they're, you know, they've just proven themselves over the past few years that they're the best and most consistent team at the, you know, the top of the doubles game. Um, and they they have such a great chemistry together. I know you've interviewed their coach Dave O'Hare before on the podcast, and he. The, the three of them seem to just really have a, a good unit together. Um, so I, I think they'll come out of this. Um, but I, I would also be interested to see how uh, Mahout and Poots do together, you know, partnering up this year. And they, I think they were fortunate to take mm-hmm. uh, Kyrgios and Kokonakis' spot in the draw because previously they had drawn um, Murray and Venus, which would have been a really tough first round in more ways than one. Right. Right. Venus and, and Poots teamed up uh, for the better part of the last couple of years. Um, so I'm sure that that would have been fun to watch. I was actually looking forward to that because they know each other's game so well. Um, but uh, for this quarter, yeah, I'm with you. I, I just it's one of those scenarios where, like, I'm not sure. Based on their result a few weeks ago at that tournament in India, like I'm not sure how ram and salisbury are playing and i was looking for a way to not pick them in this quarter um just kind of a hunch that like maybe they'll start the year a little slower since they finished the year so strong last year um but i just don't see anybody in here beating them um especially when you put when you know the slams getting to play the the full third set is going to favor the top teams 
and especially the consistent ones like Ram and Salisbury. So I, I agree. I think they'll, they should be able to lock to the semis in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. So, so you've got your four, um, who do you have going on to the finals and, and winning uh, on the men's side? Um, I picked Mektic and Pavic to win. And I think that they'll play Ram and Salisbury in the finals. Okay. Interesting. Um, so for me, this is a hard one because I'm I'm kind of going like I said like Raymond Salisbury is that team that you like tr- oh excuse me uh, that team you really trust a lot and they've like proven themselves over and over over the years but then you've got these other two teams um, in Glasspool Heliovara uh, Dodig and Krychek obviously Dodig's been there he's proved proven himself over the years but Krychek um, as of last year he's relatively new to the you know Grand Slam contention. Uh, stage. Um, so I would argue that those two teams are maybe a little hotter. Um, but uh, I didn't pick before. I'm trying to think. You would argue I'm, that Doge, Krychek, and Glasspool, Heliovara are hotter? A little. Right well, Mektic, Pavic are, are playing good. I'm mostly talking about Ram and Salisbury, I'd say. Um, but uh, for me, I, yeah, I think Glasspool and Heliovara are going to take the next step. I think they're going to get through um, to the final against Dodig and Krychek, and I feel like Dodig and Krychek are going to win it. Um, I think they had that taste at the French Open last year, and they want to win a major so bad um, that you know we they saw they played it. well. Yeah, they we saw they played well last week, and, and I think they've. Um, probably put in the work uh, over the off season to, to come in hot and, uh, and do well here. Yeah. They've had some heartbreaks too. Didn't they? I know that obviously the French open last year when they had several match points or championship mm-hmm. points, but didn't they also go Oh, and three in the um, ATP finals group play and like all lose. I feel like I remember them losing really tight, a couple of really tight matches. In yeah. The I know they would... Format. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they lost their first two in the third set, and their last one, they may, yeah, I, I think it went to a third set as well. That yeah, they may have lost that as well. Uh, I can't remember, um, but yeah, I, I think they're ready to take that next step. So that's that's my pick. Um, all it's right, cool so anything to see two else? Americans in the um, in the doubles top ten right now with Ram and and Krychek. And yeah. that they were both just selected to play uh, Davis Cup next month in Uzbekistan after the whole Rajiv Ram Davis Cup debacle last year. It's nice to see two doubles players get that opportunity from the U.S. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm uh, happy to see Raj on there, <laughs> rightfully so. Um, after I did what happened my, a couple months ago. My other, only other team that we haven't mentioned, my nine through sixteen uh, dark horse team, was Cabal and Farah. Just because mm-hmm. that you know they play together for so long and have won a few majors together, um, they're yeah. also in the the bottom portion of the draw. So interested to see how how they do. Yeah, yeah, they started to play a little better. They made a good run at the the U.S. Open um, after not really going deep in I don't think any Grand Slams um, for the previous several. So uh, yeah, that wouldn't that would not surprise me. Um, okay, so let's go over to the women's draw. Uh, in a way, this feels just overall. I, I was looking at it, chatting with you before. In a way, it feels a lot more open to me, but in another way, it feels like the Czechs are just going to win again, <laughs> like they always do. Um, yeah, it's interesting. There's a lot more, you know, as we kind of expected. Um, just looking at the top teams, there's a lot more shakeup in the yeah. women's game um, at the beginning of the year. It's always interesting to see, you know, which teams stuck together from last year, which new teams have cropped up. And, you know, there's several intriguing teams um, at the top of the women's game this year that are, are new, um, new partnerships that we're excited to, to see how they do. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a lot more so on the women's side. Um, so we'll start with the top quarter. Uh, we have the checks as the top overall seed. Um, this looks like to me, the most difficult quarter. Uh, I would agree. But I do have them going through it uh, because why wouldn't I? Um, Katie McNally and Louisa Stefani are the 15 seed. Asia Muhammad, Taylor Townsend, the 12 seed. 
Uh, and then Kravchik ensures the six seed. Um, who do you have in this quarter? This is a little bit of a, a spicy pick, but I, um, <laughs> I've got the Americans, uh, Townsend and Muhammad, um, going okay. through this one. I think, you know, they won Adelaide one together and then Taylor Townsend, uh, teamed up with Louisa Stefani to win Adelaide two. So she's eight and no on the year in doubles already. Um, and I, I like them, their chances to, to keep the form. And obviously they've got a tough road, but I think it's a workable draw until they would meet the checks. Um, in the quarterfinals and um you know that would be a battle but uh you know I, I like their chances to get through yeah yeah i'd expect them to make it to the quarters and meet the checks um the way taylor townsend is playing uh i got to watch her a little bit last week and um yeah i mean two consecutive titles with two different partners she's just on fire right now um so yeah but i, I still have the checks um uh, I think they're going to repeat this year. Um, I'm not going to pick against them probably at all this year, unless they give me some reason not to. Uh, Siniakova did make the finals of Adelaide one and lost in the 10 point tiebreaker to um, Asia and uh, Taylor Townsend. Um, that was part of the so, reason behind my, my picking them too, just that they, they kind of crossed that mental hurdle and, and ha- mm-hmm. you know now they have added confidence over getting a win over Siniakova, who's you know very tough to beat in doubles. So that was yeah a little bit of the, my reasoning behind it. But I know you know the Czechs are certainly going to be favored by most people. Yeah, yes, yeah, Siniakova was playing with the uh, Storm Sanders slash Hunter. Now is that right? So yeah, um, yeah, I, th- I think Krejcikova is just a better complement for. Her. They've been playing together longer. Um, they're going to. Uh, in my mind, win the tournament. So um, a couple other matchups. Well, let's move on to the second quarter here. So um, so for those of you listening, Storm Sanders got married over the offseason, and her last name is Hunter now. So her name is Storm Hunter. So that's who we're referring to there. Uh, she has teamed up with Elise Mertens, who I think we were both surprised to see Mertens and uh, Kuder Matova split after winning the WTA finals here in Fort Worth last year. Um, and they drew each other in the first round. So they're going to be playing Kuder Matova and Samsonova in the first round. Uh, also in this quarter, we have Rizos- Rizolska and Routliff, um, Melikar Martinez and Perez, and Haddad Maya and Zhang Shui. Uh, this is a very tough quarter. What? Um, who do you have coming out of this one? Well, first of all, I think it's interesting that um, going back to the split between Mertens and Kudermertova, because in Fort Worth, you know, after the um, at the press conference after they won, you and I were both sitting there mm-hmm. and asked them, you know, point blank, are you guys planning to play together next year? And they, at that time, they, you know, they said that they were, whether or not. Um, that was true, or maybe they, you know, had later conversations that ended up wanting to split. But I was, yeah, I was surprised to see them um, split up after they had such a good run in Fort Worth and took out the checks and a great doubles final. Um, but yeah. I've got uh, Kuder Matova and Sam Sanova getting out of this one. I think, um, you know, we, you and I both saw how Kuder Matova was the best player on in the WTA doubles finals last fall and um, pairing up her with. Sam Sonova, who's a really strong singles player and has also had good doubles results. Um, I think mm-hmm. that they they will be a very dangerous unseated team here if they can get past um, Hunter and Mertens in the first round. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is what I meant when I, I said that the women's draw feels a lot more open. Um, it's crazy because uh, they're unseated, you know, but I, I also have them coming out of this quarter. Um, I think... Yeah, just watching Kuder Matova in uh, the WTA Finals, she was the best player on the court in every match she played. Um, And I think that that will continue. But honestly, nothing would surprise me in this quarter. Um, Yeah, they've got a brutal section of the draw because Babos and Mladenovic could be a second-round opponent. And they've they've won four majors together and both used to be number one doubles players. Um, So that's, that's a pretty brutal section right there with some of those unseated teams 
Yeah, this is going to be a lot of really good doubles in this quarter. Um, and we've seen, uh, I had Erin Ratliff on the podcast about a month ago. She's continued to improve every single year for the last three years. Uh, we saw the last six months of 2022, Melikar Martinez and Perez were arguably the the best team on tour um, and just missed the, the WTA finals. Uh, so that, it wouldn't surprise me to see them come through. Um, Layla Fernandez has teamed up with Bethany Maddox Sands and they were in the finals in Auckland. I think they were up a set and one or two breaks. Um, I think Fernandez was serving for the match and they didn't close it out and lost in a third, but, um, they They're were playing be well there. Watch. Yeah. So, so, and they've drawn Haddad Maya and Zheng Shui, who are a great team as well. So, um, yeah, this is just a really tough quarter. Really, really tough. Um, so Maddox be, Sands and Fernandez will be, yeah, I think they'll definitely bring the crowds, whichever, whatever match they play, just knowing how popular they both are on and mm-hmm. off the court. Um, so that's a, that's a tough first round for both teams. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, okay. So this third quarter is um, Dabrowski and Olmos. So if Dabrowski Olmos are the three seed, Flipkins and Siegman are 13. Shibahara Aoyama are 10 seeds, and then Kichinok Ostapinko. Who do you have in this one? Um, I actually picked another unseeded team in this mm-hmm. quarter, um, and I have Pavlochinkova and Rybakina getting out of this quarter. Hmm. Okay. Um, Didn't they make the finals of, of yeah, Adelaide 2 last year? Like, I mean, last week? Last week, yeah, they did. So, yeah, th- so they have Kichinok Ostapinko in the first round. Um, which is a obviously a pretty tough matchup. Uh, I've got Kichnok Ostapenko coming out of this quarter, so the winner of this match is definitely in a good position to um, to go through. And you're right, Pavlyuchenkova and Rybakina uh, did make the finals last week and lost, I think, like six and six um, to Townsend and Stefani. Uh, so they are playing good. Uh, for sure. We also have uh, Guarachi and Chan, who are a pretty tough doubles team. Uh, Shibahara Aoyama are the 10 seeds, and they had a tough start to the year. Um, let me look this up. I know they lost first round. Let's see here. Yes, yeah, so they lost to Kravchik and Scherz in the first round last week, and then in Adelaide won. They won a round and then lost to Townsend and Muhammad, who won the tournament. So, um, but they've had all, too. yeah, that's tough. And, and they've had a lot of success in Australia. I think they made the finals two years ago, maybe um, two or three years yeah, they ago. Had a great, they had a great year in 2021. I remember following them, mm-hmm. and they, you know, I think in 2021 they won five titles um, and also made it to the semifinals of the year in championships. In Guadalajara, yeah. so um, did they? Do you know if they split last year because of Shibahara's singles priorities? I, th- or? I think so, but I, I don't know for sure. Um, but yeah, they did split for. They played in Australia and then they split for most of the year, um, and it looks like they're back here um, for the Australian Open. And they, yeah, they're a really fun team to watch as well strategically. Like a- Aoyama's such a, a good mover at the net. Um, and Shibahara has, has a massive forehand from the baseline. So um, if you have a chance to watch them, I highly recommend that. Uh, and then, yes, yeah, so we already made our picks for this quarter. So let's move on. Um, I guess we didn't talk about Dabrowski and Olmos. So they had a rough end to the year. I think they went 0-3 at the WTA finals. Um, but they are back one together. And two, right? 1-2, yeah, they oh, got yeah, that's the right. Whenever Kitchenock and Ostapenko, like last, you know, 12 10 or something, but they still didn't qualify because of the way the sets worked yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, so but I think either uh, way, probably a disappointing result for them not getting to the semis. And then they lost um, their first round last week, I believe, to um, Stozer and Melikar Martinez. Yeah, they did. Um, so we'll we'll see how they do. They They do have a relatively straightforward i mean i say that this women's draw is so open um straightforward first couple of rounds mostly against some singles players it looks like 
uh, before they have to play any double specialists. So, Vincich Teichman um, could be tough second round if for um, Dabrowski and Olmos if they both win their first round because they have played really well together and in mm-hmm. Fed Cup, or really Jean King Cup, excuse me. And then I think they won the um, the silver medal together at um, the Tokyo Olympics. So that that could be a tricky right. I think they second round opponent for them. Yeah, Teichman's a good uh, a good doubles player as well. Um, so moving on to this bottom quarter, we have uh, Golf and Pagula are the two overall seeds. Um, and then Dan Alina and Sonia Mirza, who we thought for a while was going to retire at the end of the year, but it looks like she's going to play um, at least to start the year. We'll see how long she goes. Uh, this is actually, she she did announce that this is going to be her last major and then okay. she is retiring, I believe, after the Middle East swing sometime in February. But this will definitely be her last Grand Slam. Okay, got it. Um, so what what do you make of this quarter? Who, who do you have coming through here? Um, I like golf and Pagula's chances to get out of this a lot. I uh, I know they had a tough tough run at the WTA Finals, but both of them have looked super sharp and confident in their um, in their singles game so far, and they have a fairly straightforward draw as mm-hmm. compared to some of the other, the top half, which is a lot more loaded with um, dangerous unseated teams and just informed teams. I think they have a, a pretty workable draw to get to the quarters and, you know, and likely the semis. So I, um, mm-hmm. I'm going to pick the Americans in this one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have them as well. Uh, one unseated team that I just saw now, I don't know how I missed this earlier, uh, is Kennan and Putin Seva. Um, so they have teamed up several times over the last year or so, and I feel like they've done well um, at a lot of tournaments. So they're an unseated team to uh, to keep an eye on. Kenan, for some reason, is is I guess her backhand she can go either direction, and um, she she's had some decent results in doubles over the years. So um, that's a team to uh, to keep an eye on as well. Yeah, didn't we watch them in Indian Wells or in or Toronto? I remember being being impressed. Yeah, we them in person. we watched them. I was just looking it up. So we watched them in uh, in Toronto. Um, they beat Kitchenock and Ostapenko, uh, and then made the quarters and lost to Sonia Mears and Madison Keys. So, um, yeah, that's a team to keep an eye on as well. So, another uh, one more unseated team that we haven't talked about is. Um, Sam Stozer and Elise Cornet. Um, this is actually speaking of retirement. This is going to be Stozer's last major as well, and she, um, I believe, has won. I know she's won nine total Grand Slams. I want to say, I know one singles and a couple of mixed doubles, and then you know several women doubles titles, both with Lisa Raymond and Zheng Tui. Um, mm-hmm. So she, you know, she's still a great doubles player. So I wouldn't wouldn't take that team lightly. Elise Cornet is also. Um, you know, capable of, you know, she's kind of been the upset queen in singles over the last couple of years of the majors. So um, I think both of them will, will probably revel in, in front of, you know, playing in front of uh, the home crowd for Sam's last grand slam together. Yeah. Yeah. Good point there. Um, okay. So who, who do you think, uh, who do you have winning the, the WTA draw? Uh, I've got Goff and Pagula. I think they'll win their first major together down under. Wow. I've got, uh, shockingly, the checks. Um, <laughs> really going out on a limb with the one and two seeds. Yeah, I think that uh, they are going to beat Kudermatova and uh, Samsonova in the semifinal. Um, I don't have, I, I, I think Kitchenok and Ostapinko will beat Golf and Pagula in the semis and then uh, lose to the checks in the final. I, I think Kitchenok and Ostapinko have. They had a pretty good fall um, winning Cincinnati. They uh, did well at the WTA Finals. Um, yeah, I feel like uh, they are going to carry some of that momentum into 2023 and, and do well uh, at the Australian Open. So we will see. Um, so let's take a brief look at the mixed draw. Oh, it's not out yet. Okay. Okay. I think that's going to wrap it up then, Hanlon. Anything else uh, before we hop off here? 
Um, no, I think I think we covered it. I'm uh, excited to see what um, just having Breakpoint, you know, recently come out coming out on Netflix and spotlighting doubles quite a bit with this first episode. I'm excited to see, you know, where mm-hmm. um, this documentary could potentially take tennis just with new eyes and ears on the sport and also on on doubles so we'll yeah. see uh we'll see how it goes yeah i hope it's popular it's this was actually probably one of the better um grand slams to do it before since it's all on espn um and it's at night kind of in prime time for us so i i think that uh that was a smart release um so for anybody listening to watch the doubles <laughs> excuse me to watch the doubles you can watch on ESPN3. So you go to watch.espn.com and you can stream any of the courts for the Australian Open. So um, definitely watch the men's and women's draw. See how our picks do. See if any of them flop. And uh, I will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Doubles Only Podcast. If you're interested in diving deeper into any topics I discuss, I've created double strategy products that allow me to bring you more podcasts and other doubles content without relying on paid ads. I have ebooks and courses that help you make better strategic decisions during matches and become the smartest player on the court. Go to thetennistribe.com slash products to learn more. You can also join my free weekly double strategy newsletter that includes video lessons and more on our homepage. If you want to connect, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or email me directly, will at thetennistribe.com.